Here we go. And you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. <laughs> that they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom! I love you. I know. Louis, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Where we're going, we don't need roads. Easy Nation, welcome to the first of what I hope to be an ongoing series called Analyze Movie Review. You know, I did a classic movie review and it was just like just a, like a regular review I would do. And I'm like, you know what, let's do a little more for the fans or for just people who like movies. Now this is going to be a, my, I had my top five videos and I enjoy doing those, but those take so much time and energy to really do because I have to revisit the best movies of an actor or director or a theme around that area and it's just a lot of work. Let me explain what this video series is what it's going to be about. It's called Analyze Movie Review which pretty much is I take a movie and I completely go from beginning to end analyzing everything I notice throughout the movie. Now I am going to try theming these around a certain movie coming out in, a, in the month. So, in the month of March, Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice comes out. So I thought it would be fun to do two Analyze Movie Reviews this month to honor Batman v Superman coming out. My first, ep my second episode is going to be a review on Zack Snyder's Man of Steel. I did a review last year and I'm like, let's do an analyzed review. Let's really break down the movie because I really like Man Still. It gets a lot of hate for no reason. But I'll talk about that in my next episode of Analyzed Review. But I thought it would be fun to start out with the best Batman movie. I want to get through the best origin story of Batman. So I think you have to start with Batman Begins. So that is a basic summary of what my Analyzed Review is going to be. I hope you enjoy. And now let's get started. Batman Begins was a movie that starred Christian Bell, Katie Holmes, Michael Caine, Liam Neeson, Morgan Freeman. Now, when this movie came out, there was a lot of worry behind it. First off, you have to remember, what was the last on-screen appearance of Batman was Batman and Robin. And that movie is terrible. It's one of the worst superhero movies, or even movies of all time. It falls in that category where it's so bad it's hilariously bad. So a lot of people were worried about Batman and and now I think the only way Batman Begins was ever was able to make was Batman had to fall so hard that they allowed a, a darker, grittier version of Batman to actually happen. If Batman and Robin was a little more successful, I don't think Batman Begins happens. Batman Begins is directed by Christopher Nolan. I love Christopher Nolan. I love pretty much every movie I've seen from him. Inception is like my favorite, one of my favorite movies of all time. And Batman Begins was a really cool origin story for everyone's favorite superhero. The movie begins with him as a kid. And he's running and he falls into like a cave. And all these bats swarm around him. And that's where Bruce Wayne discovers his fear of bats. The scene then cuts to Bruce Wayne. He's in like an Asian, like China or like Vietnam or Korea, some kind of prison. And he's in, he's just full of criminals and everything. He's a criminal himself. Where then we see Liam Neeson who portrays Ra's al Ghul. Now Ra's al Ghul is a really cool character, especially for this version of the movie. I'll speak a little more of his character later on, but offers Bruce Wayne a choice to continue living in the muck or I can give you a purpose because during that moment he was lost. He didn't know what he wanted to do with his life and he and he found a purpose through Ra's al Ghul. But if you make yourself more than just a man, if you devote yourself to an ideal and if they can't stop you, then you become something else entirely. Which is? Legend, Mr. Wayne. So he joins up with the League of Assassins and they pretty much, Bruce Wayne becomes a ninja. Batman's a ninja. That's pretty, pretty cool. And then we cut to a flashback scene 
where it's more of him as a kid. And really, this is the famous scene of when his parents get killed. It's a, it was very, really well executed. You really see how good of a man Thomas Wayne is. I believe this was the first portrayal of Thomas Wayne in the Batman anthology. You see his parents get killed, and really, there's so many comics or some cartoons where... I remember a Justice League episode where Wonder Woman says it was nice to be a kid again and Batman says I haven't been a kid since I was 10 years old and I watched my parents die because that was the death of Bruce Wayne and that's where the, the walk to becoming Batman truly begins. It's also cool to see that Gordon was the cop that actually comforts Bruce Wayne and you see reference for that the entire series. It then cuts back to the present and you see Bruce Wayne he's training to become a ninja and you see all this stuff, you see him trying, they're teaching him his methods and what would really become his methods. Using theatrical, making everything a little more over the top than what it actually is, putting fear in people's eyes. In order to, for Bruce Wayne to become Batman, he must conquer fear itself. Learn about Ra's al Ghul's past and how he had a past and something happened to him and he found a purpose and he did it. And then we cut to another flashback of Bruce Wayne's. In this flashback, it's he's he's been in his adulthood right before he runs away. Trial for the guy who killed his parents. They're trying to get him out because he has information against Falcone who's like a mob boss. And we see Bruce Wayne, he's a lost he he goes out there to kill Chill. He's like, I want revenge. It's all I've been dreaming about all these years. And it's really a low point of his life. And one thing I'll really say uh, about this movie. Michael Caine as Alfred. Perfect cast. And for this Alfred, brilliant. I'm really curious to see what the new Alfred is going to bring. But I really like Michael Caine's version of Alfred. Also, you see Rachel. Rachel was a kid in the first flashback. And you can always see there's a little chemistry there. I mean, there always has to be a romance in a comic book movie. She's played by Katie Holmes, and she plays the character Rachel, and she's a, like a a lawyer and everything. And then whenever Chill, the, after the trial, you see you see Bruce Wayne, he has the gun in his in his jacket, he's getting ready to kill and then Falcone's hitman kills Chill. So he's robbed of the murder and he tells Rachel later and he says, I was gonna kill him and Rachel slaps him and says, your father would be ashamed. And Bruce, he's out in toward the, towards the ocean and he throws a gun in the water, showing how ashamed he really is. He goes to Falcone. Falcone pretty much teaches him a lesson. And then we see Bruce Wayne. He runs away. And for seven years, he's in exile. He becomes a criminal. He goes off into the world, trying to understand the mind of the criminal, becoming a criminal itself. His quest was a qu the quest to of the League of Assassins, or the League of Shadows, I keep forgetting. His quest in the League of Shadows is to conquer fear itself, to become fear, and your enemies cannot defeat you. Dude, I mean, in the comics, you see Batman, he's trying, they want him to become the next Ra's al Ghul, and pretty much Arrow, the TV show, in season three, they want Oliver Queen to be the Arrow, because they pretty much turn Arrow into Batman. Bruce saves Ra's al Ghul, thinking that Ra's al Ghul's are actually dead, because there was another actor, who I believe it was Ken Watanabe, who was playing Ra's al Ghul. Bruce, he, Pretty much calls Alfred. He gets a ride from Alfred in, in one of his planes. And Alfred and Bruce are talking. Bruce says, I want to do what my father did, but I want to do more. My father, he he had an example. He used his money to bring the rich to help out the poor. People need dramatic examples, so he needs to become the Batman to save the city. He has to wear a mask in order to protect the people he cares about, like Alfred and Rachel. And what's cool is he builds, you see him building the Bat Cave, you see him go down the cave, and then he, you see Bruce Wayne, he reintroduces himself to the world. He goes to Wayne Industries, where we meet Lucius Fox. Lucius Fox was played by Morgan Freeman, and Morgan Freeman is really good in these movies. Pretty much Lucius Fox, he builds Batman all his toys, but he shows him all these toys he can use, and it's pretty cool to see. Like one of my favorite parts is like, so what are you gonna use this for? Spelunkin. You know, Cave Diamond. More free Cave Diamond. 
expecting to run a lot of gunfire in these caves, Mr. Wayne. So, it's pretty cool to see. You see this dynamic the entire movie. Well, then we see Gordon and Flask. Flask is like his partner or something. And Gordon, he just looks defeated. A city where no one really cares about anything. We also see the Tumblr, which becomes the Batmobile, which is pretty cool because it's pretty much a tank. And then you have that great line, does it come in black? You see the thing at the, then you see uh, the drugs at the harbor. Batman, you see Batman, he takes them all out like ninjas, like a ninja would. And that last scene is pretty awesome. I'm Batman. <laughs> One thing I really like about Batman Begins is we get to see a little more dynamic than we did in any of the Tim Burton Batmans or the Schumacher Batmans. Of course we saw more in the Schumacher, in these in the Schumacher. The Schumachers are terrible. But you see, what Bruce Wayne really is, he's three characters. And that's what I really enjoyed about the performance of Christian Bell. He, he has to play three different characters. He has to play the Bruce Wayne, the party boy. He has to play Batman. And he has to play Bruce Wayne where he is... The real Bruce Wayne towards Alfred and like Lucius. We also we have a villain called Scarecrow. Scarecrow is a pretty cool villain. The guy who plays him, Cillian Murphy, I think that's his name. He does a really good job in this movie, and he shows up in all three of the Dark Knight trilogy. Batman he interrogates Flask, and he's like, "Swear to me." The guy who play the kid who plays Joffrey Baratheon in Game of Thrones. He his first role was in Batman Begins. It's pretty awesome. Batman goes to an apartment where Crane will Scarecrow poisons Batman and he's out of it for like two days and he's like that's a little more weaponized than what I've dealt with before. Lucius saves him and then the party has where he has to go save Rachel from uh, Crane and the po and all his criminals. Batman interrogates Scarecrow after he defeats all of the criminals that was with Scarecrow and he says, who are you working for? He's like, Ra's al Ghul. And he's like, Ra's al Ghul is dead. And it's pretty cool to see. He, Batman also uses a summoning jutsu to summon a bunch of bats to cover his escape. But what you really get to see is you get to see the tumbler in action, which is pretty cool to see. All the cops chasing after him. It's pretty awesome. When the Batmobile is jumping rooftops, that's pretty cool. Batman goes and saves Rachel. She's cured. And then Bruce Wayne has a birthday party. But guess who shows up? Raz Al Ghul. Am I pronouncing this right? Mr. Raz Al Ghul? You're not Raz Al Ghul. I watched him die. But is Raz Al Ghul immortal? Are his methods supernatural? You got Ra's al Ghul's head, because in the comics, Ra's al Ghul is kind of immortal. He has the electric fist that makes him alive. And they did a really cool thing with this story. That's, that's a really cool way to do Ra's al Ghul justice, because Batman, this Batman is set in a real world Batman. If, he, if, if Bruce Wayne was a real person, Batman was a real person, it's a real life scenario. That's what I really liked about it. Ross burns Batman's house down, just like Batman burned Ross's house down, so I guess now they're even. Alfred saves Batman, and he pulls one of my favorite lines of the Batman Begins. Batman Begins has so many great quotes. How do we fall, sir? So that we can learn to pick ourselves up. Also, Ghoul and the League of Shadows has their microwave emitter trying to disperse their poison all across the city. Batman and Gordon team up, they split up, Gordon blows up the tracks, and Batman stops Ra's al Ghul. And one thing I really liked about this scene was Ra's al Ghul's like, so you're finally going to do what's necessary. Batman's like, I'm not going to kill you, but I'm not going to save you. He just flies away. And now, I don't understand why Batman lets some character die, but when Superman's when Superman snaps General Saw's neck and Man of Steel, people are more outraged about that than they are about Batman Begins. So, I don't know, fans are crazy. We'll get more than that when I get to the analyzed review of Man of Steel. And then the movie pretty much ends. You have you have Bruce Wayne, he's going to rebuild Wayne Manor. Then you get a pretty cool Joker reference. 
So that was pretty cool to see in the movie, and it also hints away at what's going to be in The Dark Knight. I'll give you an analyzed movie review of The Dark Knight when, right before Suicide Squad comes out. Overall, Batman Begins is one of my favorite superhero movies. It's one of my favorite origin stories, and I love Batman Begins. It gets an A+. It's not really a rating of the movie, just because this is just a complete analyzed review of the movie. I hope you enjoyed this analyzed review, so comment in the section below. Tell me what movie you want me to analyze. It could be anything. It could be old. It could be a movie that just came out. Well, not just came out. I have to. I have to own it on Blu-ray. I have to see it. But just tell me what movie you want me to analyze, and I may do it. Guys, if you like this video, click that thumbs up button and subscribe to see more. All too easy. Yeah.